So let's look at distribution now. If you hadn't already got it, this is very complex, PTP. It works above the physical layer, so we're looking at layer two and layer three. Now I'm, a, I'm an engineer by training. Layer one, physical stuff, that's what I worked on. It wasn't that difficult, really, but we still had lots of issues. We had people misconfiguring things. We had faults. We had switching. We had rerouting. We're now working at layer two and layer three for synchronization in PTP world. And we're going to use this for delivering phase across the network. So what are the challenges? Well, one of the things that I, I really do think about, people have to start thinking about sync in a very different way. Think of, I think of PTP as a logical plane of timing. Sync E as a logical plane of timing. And you've got the physical network below. When I'm thinking about sync problems and challenges customers have, I try and separate these things out into logical layers. It makes it much easier to understand what's going on in some cases. So as a highlight, let's have a look at some of these things. So OK, we're still going to get equipment failures. That happens. I'm sure when you do your due diligence with vendors' equipment, you look at MTBFs and failure rates and all of those things. That's going to happen. You're going to have path reroutes. OK. You're going to have engineering misconfigurations. How many of you engineers have been called at 3 o'clock in the morning and made a configuration change in a network with a good intention to go back and fix it the next morning? You sleep in, you go off to the next fault, and that little time bomb sits in the network. And then another call out happens in another site, another small configuration change gets left in the network. And I've seen over many years these little time bombs sit there and they don't cause a problem. And then one day you get two major failures and all these little problems together mean you get massive outages. So that's going to happen. We've got queuing delays. We've got bandwidth variation. This is a very complex net. We've got outages and protection switching. OK, this one's interesting. Someone talked about this this morning. PTP, the protocol, is standardized. But the client that the equipment vendors put in their products, or you can buy externally, are not standardized. They have an algorithm, software algorithm, and a clock. And some choose to invest more in the hardware clock and some more in the software algorithm. So the performance will vary. It will be different. So that's a factor that is, is a real challenge. Now let's compare that to Sync E and Sonnet and SDH, all the things that we are familiar with. The picture looks a lot less cluttered, doesn't it? There are, a lot, there are far less issues that will impact the distribution of sync. Now, this doesn't, this, this doesn't allow you to carry phase, but I just want to highlight the fact that this was very simple. Equipment failures still, yep. Yeah. Configuration problems, yep. Yeah. Outage and switching, OK. Bad design might mean you might have too many hops. But if you compare it to the previous picture, this is a much more complex scenario we're working with. So I think of PTP as a service. You've got a grandmaster clock, which is the server. It uses, sends PTP packets into the network. They traverse the network in whichever way is best designed and suited for them. And they arrive at the point of use. That's what voice does. That's what data does. It's a service. So why shouldn't it be monitored and tested and looked after in the same way that other services are? Interesting question. We've talked about the... Uh, not every packet is sacred. Now, I guess how many of you are uh, fans of Monty Python? Any of you remember the meaning of life? This is a bit of a, a, a twist on that, uh, 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 that, uh, that saying. Um, I believe there is a clear case to monitor 1PPS. 1PPS is the signal that gives you your phase alignment in the network. I contend, and I can, every year I, t I say the same story, you can go in and measure every single PTP packet for the rest of your life continuously. And there are scenarios where that will be, that will be good and you'll get bad 1PPS coming out. Why invest huge amount of resources and time measuring your PTP packets when it's the service that's important? Only look at the packets if the service is bad enough to warrant fault investigation. And here's the example. And this is thanks to Billy for this uh, picture. 
We struggle for a while to try and find a, a fairly easy way to describe it. You've got a network scenario here. You've got PDV, the same, going into two different clocks. The performance of those clocks will be different because of how they've been engineered. And you'll get one that's bad, and you'll get one that's good. You're interested in the one PPS phase alignment signal here. If this is showing good, do I care that I'm losing 10% of the PTP packets? 20%, 30%, 40%? I contend you don't. When you start seeing the service start to degrade, then you invest the time in doing fault finding in the packet network. And I speak to so many customers who want to seem to invest and believe they have to invest in doing packet, deep packet analysis of 1588 timing packets. It's going to cost a fortune and prove very little. The standards are, Chris, I think we'll talk a little bit more about this later, Chris Farrow, but the standards are moving on. So what we're seeing is, um, let's go back on there. We've got vendors now who are putting time and uh, one PPS time of day ports on their access devices. We can pass PTP across the network, but the standards are beginning to indicate that routers should have a one PPS BNC port on them in the future. So you can, as an operator, look at the phase at that device in the core of the network. And importantly, back to this one, which I'm glad Billy highlighted, I'm quite concerned about this. More and more vendors, I have to be very careful what I say here, but I think we might not all know in the room where, that, where this problem lies. There are vendors in this room who do this very well. They provide the ports. They provide the software access for you to see what's going on in the products. They provide the good management piece. Other vendors are not doing this, and I'm very, very concerned that this will lead operators to you know, make decisions that will cause huge um, maintenance headaches in the future. So... We may find that in a network where you've already got PTP deployed here and you want this to support phase, you may need to start thinking about pushing the Grandmaster out. As Clive highlighted, we have some boxes that are smaller uh, and uh, more engineered to be pushed towards the edge of the network. Well, if you're doing some measurement of your one PPS signal here, as you're... It, sometime before you actually need to deploy phase across the whole network, you can begin to assess that, where is the right point to put a, a new grandmaster which will provide the time of day to deliver phase out? Is it here? Is it here? Or is it here? And that will have a big impact on your cost, your investment that you need. But I, I know of no other way than doing some real network testing benchmarking characterization of your network. This may work very well with 10 hops, 15 hops for frequency. Phase is a t totally different game. And we've got customers already doing this who are talking about their plans for 2014 and 15 for having their network phase ready. They're starting to monitor the one PPS in their current PTP frequency network to see how well it's performing over the short, medium, and long term. And what they can do, what they need to be able to do in some next slides, is to maybe put a temporary PTP system here and see how well that drives frequency to the uh, phase to the edge. And I'll look at some of those slides in a moment. So here's some examples. We've got a case where, well, we've got lots of cases actually, where customers are now going into using PTP for their frequency networks in full operation. And they're getting more and more devices supporting PTP and they're beginning to see operational issues. How do we find the root cause of the fault very quickly? And the tools haven't really existed. And they're struggling, and they're spending lots of resource time chasing problems. So this is a classic example. We've got a router, uh, Grandmaster clock at the edge, a number of routers down to a device that has a PTP client inside. Well, take, this could be 10, 12 router hops. If you had a small portable device that you could send PTP packets either to the same client device and switch over to that flow, switch between these flows to see the difference in performance, or if you could had a tester at this location and you could set up another PTP flow to this tester to me measure the PTP packets themselves and look at them and see what's going on, that might be very useful. Now, a lot of this will assume 
that you can see the sky. This is one of the big operational issues about going to phase. A lot of testing, you will need to get access to the same reference as the source of the packets. Same reference means getting access to GPS. What happens if you're in a basement in this location? Power industry's got a real problem with this. They might be 10 floors under in a, uh, in a hydroelectric scheme. And they have to run today 150 meters of cable upstairs and out the door, and it takes them a day to run the cable. And it can damage the cable. So the cost of doing this in the telecom industry could be very expensive doing it the old fashioned way. But time port here, this little box here means you can go outside, see the clear view of sky for about 40 minutes. You can then take the power off, or maybe it's on battery already, take the antenna off, walk inside, and for about eight hours, you will have UTC stability that will be good enough for you to do this type of testing. And it's a handheld device. I think, I think there's one on the back of the room there. Here's another example. If you didn't, have, uh, didn't want to take, didn't have available a very feature-rich sync tester, but you had a second time port unit, it's a portable source of time, but we also have a 1PPS phase measurement port built into it. So you take this into the site, and you can do 1PPS phase measurement. It could be, could be connected to power in this location. It may have a GPS, spare GPS port that you trust already, but the device can run on battery and give you eight hours of UTC traceability. So it's flexible. Here's another scenario, I won't talk about that. You can look at the slides after. Asymmetry, I think, Billy, you might have touched on asymmetry, I think someone else earlier. This is a real challenge that, that's just beginning to hit, just when we thought PTP was solved. Asymmetry is a threat to phase. So if you want to look at true one-way packet delay, to do that with any degree of accuracy, you've got to have the same reference at both ends. And we know there are vendors out there with test solutions who say, you don't need GPS at the other end. Use the time base of the PTP packets coming in to become the time base on the tester, and I'll use that to measure the one-way delay. That's just not good engineering practice. That just doesn't work. If you've got PDV in the network, this tester on the far end is going to be following the PDV. So your time base isn't a solid, reliable time base. So again, the solution we believe is using a time port type device. Go outside and you've got the flexibility. If you can't get GPS in this room for whatever reason, no ports, you don't trust the GPS, um, you're just not allowed into that room where that piece of equipment happens to be located, then use a time port unit. And then you've effectively got the same GPS reference at both ends, and you can get true one-way packet delay measurements out of the network. So, summary on this piece. It's very complex. There are far more things to worry about in the PTP network than we've ever had to worry about for sync before. It's not all doom and gloom. Not every PTP packet is sacred, okay? PTP is designed to still synthesize the frequency and the phase that your applications need with packet loss, with 1588 packet loss. So again, I've had, we've had customers chasing one or two dropped PTP packets a day or a week, and they've spent loads of time chasing those problems down. Does it really matter? No because the phase or the frequency was still well within spec. Um, I'm convinced that some level of external monitoring in conjunction with the statistics in the end devices is the only way that operators will get the true picture of how their network is behaving over time. Because the network dynamics will change, traffic will change, engineering changes will take place in the network that have not been planned and designed in. People's edge, you know, as an operator, you need to be challenging your vendors to make sure they can give you access to that uh, sync data within their own boxes, get access to the statistics, but you've also got to have external ports on so you can externally verify the sync is actually doing what it says you should be doing. We've developed some new tools, and you need to think about the test scenarios that if you need bookended references, GPS, then you need to have tools that will give you that bookended reference in all locations.